What's up, Nebraska family? We got to win. We got to win. That's step one. <laughs> we haven't had one of those in a while. And who knows what a win's going to do for this team, these players, these new players that we brought on that don't have the cancerous mindset of losing 80 straight. You know what I mean? Um, so that's good to see. So let's see what happens with that. I made a ton of notes, and I've already shot one video, and it was way too long. Um, I took a lot of notes and I was rambling a lot. I wasn't rambling, but I took a lot of notes. And so I'm going to narrow it down a little bit, spit it as fast as possible because ain't nobody wants to watch. Everybody's ADHD. Nobody wants to watch a long video anyway. Um, right off the bat, Nick Heinrich was not playing. Um, you know, so that he looked like he had a wrist or something like that. So immediately when I saw that, I was thinking to myself, Jason Peter, Trev Alberts playing with broken hands. Why? For the most part, why? <sighs> I've never, I've never understood their injury protocol. Never understood it. Um, sometimes I feel like there's a lot of perpetuation for softness, um, softness within the, within how they do things behind the screen. But hey, I'm just spitballing. I don't know. I don't know that for a fact. Um, Lante Brown is a playmaker. Um, Anthony Grant, that's the best running back. He's got to get to a thousand yards before you start talking about he's better than Divino Zigbo. But how much time have we had? And how many backs have we had to where we can actually tout a quality, quality running back? That dude's got great hips, amazing balance. He's got a little shimmy and shake to him. He doesn't look decept he doesn't look fast, but he's deceptively fast. He's leaving guys in his dirt. Um, his jump cut is fabulous. Fabulous. He and his vision is amazing. With this offensive line, you need to have amazing vision. You need to have amazing vision. You need to be able to basically do a lot of this stuff on your own. Um what a stud. Trey Palmer's a stud. Isaiah Castaneda is a stud. We need more help at tight end. Um, I actually thought we had more depth at tight end. Um, be behind Travis Vokalik doesn't seem like that's the case. Um, you know, and I'm not going to get to the offensive line yet because I get a little bit. I get, I, that's the reason my last video was so long is because I got long-winded about the offensive line. All right, Garrett Nelson, he came to play today. He came to play today, and he, he looked fabulous. He looked fast. He looked like he was reading the blocks well. He got his first sack finally, um, you know, and sometimes, I mean, first of all, it helps that it was nice that he wasn't playing against arguably what could be one of the better offensive lines, if not the best offensive line by the end of the year in the conference. Um, you know, uh, uh, Fitzgerald, the Northwest coach, has already said, come out and said that he thought in training camp that this Northwestern offensive line would be the best one that he's had the 17 years that he's been there. And that's saying something. That's saying something for a team that's, always touted itself as being physical and fundamentally sound and has been to how many Big Ten titles? I haven't won any, but, you know, they've still been to them. Um, that's saying something, and that was a really good offensive line, is a really good offensive line. Um, <clears throat> we'll see how good they end up getting. Getting. We'll see if they in inevitably end up being one of the better ones anyway. Um, so Garrett Nelson looked good. The tackles looked like they came along. I will say they looked lethargic in the first half. They looked lethargic in the first half. They looked a little bit, um, you know, they almost looked like the short week basically coming back from Ireland. It looked like it affected them. You know, it looked like it affected them. And uh, let's see, what else? And, you know, and nobody's giving North Dakota any props. Or you Naturally, you don't want to give them any props, but it's like, you know, North Dakota's not a bad program. South Dakota took Iowa to the wire today. Um, you know, you not UTEP, but uh, I'm trying to remember. But whatever, there's a couple other smaller schools that took some other teams, upset some other teams, and took some other teams to the wire. So it's like nowadays everybody's got athletes, man. You know, unless you're Georgia, Alabama, Ohio State, Michigan, you know, unless you're any one of those teams, like by and large, you're in a game every week, right? Um, the offensive line. This is going to be the death of us, this offensive line. I think defense will get better. I think the defensive line will get better. Um, this offensive line, by and large, scheme-wise, scheme-wise requires, apparently, trees. Initially, giant human beings, you're thinking to yourself, that's a good thing. You know, you want a giant offensive line. You don't want a clumsy offensive line. And you don't want the scheme to put them in a position to where if they are slow footed and if they're not the fastest of offensive linemen, you don't want it to basically put them in a compromised position. And that's what it feels like our scheme is. 
our scheme this year, last year. That's what it seems like it is. It seems like it's compromising. And the, I, I'm a little bit biased in terms of some running offensive lines that we, we've had that I've seen in other programs or whatever. You know, I'm a, I'm a big fan. If you want to explode defensive lines off the ball, you need to be pulling guards. You need to be, you need to be a, a offensive linemen that are very light of foot and can drive those feet off the line of scrimmage. To me, basically what this offensive line does, um, they don't pull. They get their feet tied up quite a bit uh, beyond the initial punch. Um, their shoulders get twisted a lot, um, and they get caught up in piles because they're clumsy, because they're big and clumsy. They're, to me, they're just matadors. They're just matadors. They just play the Olay game. They just basically, they catch, they initially punch, they catch, and they slide. You know, they try to slide you out of the way, to use your momentum against you. Does it look like it works? No. On a positive note, they are way better from a penalty standpoint. Hardly any penalties. No penalties last week. Few penalties this week. So that's good to see. I guess by and large, the only hope that I have, because the scheme ain't going to change, the only thing that I hope is that they get a little bit better in terms of creating just creases, enough of a crease that this stud of a running back can find them. And he, as time progresses, he can read those creases a lot better in terms of just knowing the offensive line better. And therefore, he can just find them. But it ain't going to be easy. It's going to take time for him to really learn where those creases are because this offensive line ain't going to be blowing nobody off the ball. They ain't going to be blowing nobody off the ball. Um, all, you, all you hope is that they get better at pass protection. They stay clean penalty-wise. And by and large, as good as this running back is, um, you know he might be able to find creases a little bit. But whatever. At the end of the day, I'm... I hate, I don't like this scheme. I really don't like this scheme. And honestly, it, it just highlights a bunch of clumsy offensive linemen, in my opinion. It's, it, Teddy Prohaska has not played well, which is a bummer because when he was in, that last year's offensive line looked head and tails, or head and shoulders better than, uh, better than they did without him. He's in there now, and it, they don't look really that good. So, I don't know. You just hope that as time goes on that they gel and get familiar with each other, and we'll see what happens. But they don't look physical. They don't look physical. And... For me, to a certain degree, this team is showing signs as a place of a team that just, they don't practice physical. I don't know that. I don't know that. It's just, that's what it looks like on the field. Um, you know, in terms of tackling, tackling looks terrible. Tackling looks terrible. It looks like, again, they're not practicing physical. Um, they look like they're unfamiliar with physicality when they get hit, or when they do hit. When they do hit, it almost looks like their body is unfamiliar with the impact. And they just either bounce off or they throw themselves at the ball carrier. Um, they're not breaking down. Um, they do look quick to the ball for the most part when they're not getting tied up. I don't know. And the other, my other beef is is I love Shenander. I really do like Shenander. I think he's a hell of a coach, and I and he's shown that with the defense getting better every single year. But I've never, never liked the three four, and I've never liked, I've never liked the way the scheme applies to the secondary. I miss bump and run. I miss tight coverage. I miss taking that chance. I miss. So what if a ball goes over the top? You know, percentages are better and they're working in your favor if you're up in people's faces as opposed to just giving them the front, giving them five yards, giving them ten yards, giving them out routes forever. Anyway, I'm, about, I'm in the process of doing a video of kind of looking at some of those schemes that have just holes all over the place in terms of giving receivers crazy cushion when they don't even deserve it. You know, let a receiver earn that respect of you giving them crazy cushion. If those receivers haven't earned that respect, why are you giving them 10-yard cushion when it's 3rd and 10, when it's 3rd and 12? Because obviously out of their breaks, they're slow to get there, and they have it every single time. And quite often, they take weird angles and miss the tackle anyway. I feel like the secondary, we have the type of athletes in the secondary to be solid against the bump and run physical against the bumper run and they have loose enough hips and they can turn and run with the ball they're fast they're great athletes play some bump and run you don't have to play it every single down like we did back in the 90s you don't have to play it that way but every once in a while play some bump and run get physical take a chance let the ball go over their heads <sighs> anyway like i said i rambled too much on the last video so i had to shoot it again <laughs> be a little bit uh, less or not less a little bit uh, uh, how do you want to say less long-winded uh, 
because I'm just doing this right on my phone. Um, you know, all my other videos, you know, I'll shoot it, I'll edit it, I'll throw in a bunch of other little footage, footage and things like that so I can break it up. Um, obviously, I can't do that right now, so I'm just doing a quickie. Um, but I'm already 10 minutes in, this ain't no quickie, so boom. I'm long-winded anyway. Um, anyway, it was good to see him win. And like I said, um, and the one thing we did see is that they finished the game. You know, they they started sloppy, and you. I'm gonna I'm gonna attribute that to the short week and coming back from Ireland. That's what I'm gonna chop it up to. Um, they finished the game, and with this, these new players that they have, that could mean a lot. Of, that could mean a lot. That could mean a lot. You know, time will tell. We'll see. We'll see. Oklahoma looks good. Um, that that team from Georgia or whatever that other small school they're playing is not a bad is not a bad team, but. By and large, dude, just get the wins. Get the wins for everything that this team has been through um, over the past, uh, the how do you want to say, 48 months. <laughs> how many losses that these guys have suffered, they need wins. They just need a win. Get them however you want to and however you can, all right? Anyway, um, yeah, throw me some comments. Tell me what y'all thought. Try not to be too cynical. Try to be actually objective in terms of being hopeful of what we're seeing and moving forward. Um, just all you hope is that uh, the schemes don't hold this team down in terms of the offensive line and the cushion within the secondary. Those are my issues. Um, and I just, yeah, I, I, I hope that we got playmakers, man. We got athletes. And I, 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 that's what I'm excited to see within this team is watching these athletes progress as they get familiar with one another and some of the plays that they can make. You know what I mean? Um, and seeing them continue to write their story. Anyway, that's the one thing I'm excited about seeing. So, anyway, I look forward to the rest of the year. I'm, I'm, I'm uh, like I said, that offensive line will be the death of us. So, I'm hopeful with them. So, we'll see what happens. But anyway, um, it was a good Saturday. Take care, guys. Good to see you, Nebraska family.